Welcome to yet another dimension. I am Jeremy, and this is Andrew, and we just watched Zack Snyder's Justice League, or more commonly known colloquially as the Snyder Cut. I can't believe this came out good or decent. You're just gonna you're just gonna lay it out right there, huh? It was it was actually. Decent. A pretty good movie. <laughs> there are some things I still think could be reworked for sure to yeah. enhance this movie. Like, we'll get into what exactly it was. But overall, this is this is not a bad movie. I, I can't was surprised. I was ready, but <laughs> you wanted to say some things before we got deep into this movie. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of preamble. So, um, okay, so first off, we, we also just watched last week or something we watched justice league like the theatrical cut of justice league right the one that made it into theaters and we're shocked it made it into theaters especially after watching this movie like by comparison it's unbelievable the the difference it's a stark difference the difference is the snyder cut we're gonna call it the snyder cut snyder cut and the actual cut okay or the original the theatrical cut it's not a finished movie no it's not a finished movie it's a uh, hack job is the first <laughs> draft of a movie, and I cannot believe they released that in movie theaters. And it was a budget of what, like, whatever million? It was like three hundred million. That's yeah, it's embarrassing. It's, it's one of the worst uh, superhero movies I've ever seen. It's probably the worst. I can't think of a worse one than that. Even wow. worse than Batman versus Robin. At least it's like a complete movie. Yeah, and it pisses me off. You mean that Batman and Robin? Batman. What I said. So, you mean the one with George Clooney? Right? Yeah, that's it. Batman verse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got that other movie. The Bat Nipple? The yeah, Bat Nipples and yeah. that, but yeah. it's much, it's so much more memorable. At least it was a, yeah, no, it was stylized, that movie. Mm -hmm. And at least it's so bad, it's good. Yeah. Like, you can watch it and you're entertained because it's so fucking horrible and there's all these puns in it. And Justice League, the theatrical cut, is just, it's a bad movie. Character introductions and that's it. Yeah. And then, and, then. And barely introducing any characters, right? Ooh. So, like, like we didn't know Cyborg and Flash in this movie at all. Like, they're just like, here's some versions of them. Here's the, the Cliff Notes versions of what their character Man. arcs were. It's pretty bad. So, yeah, you're a big DC fan. All, well, most of this stuff. Most of this stuff is mine. The games uh, are mine. <laughs> yeah. So, um, he's a big, big DC fan. Yes. I'm just... I like the games. The Batman games, mostly. And some of the movies little bit but I'm I've never been invested in it but you're a big fan so it's yeah. nice uh, contrast a little different uh, perspective so yeah I like yeah that. um I could tell you that Justice League as a movie was a movie I've waited to see my whole life I think in line with Avengers I probably like DC characters more growing up than I liked Marvel characters oh, really? I like both I mean I like Spider-Man a lot and the X-Men a lot but I think uh, for the most part I lean more towards DC in terms of like like a better team like their team their justice league had more of the main dc characters in it right so i was always excited for like a justice league movie like and it never happened like even when they made batman begins and stuff like it, there was never like a shared universe thing because marvel kind of paved the way for that right yeah, it really did yeah. and uh, i think a lot of the the haste to copy marvel was kind of what was a downfall of mm -hmm. the theatrical justice league movie um there's also i think a weird choice to make Zack snyder the architect um, he's just not like it, his vision is always so very specific and it's it's tonally I think asynchronous with what Marvel did and I think they realized that after they had hired him and made Batman be Superman they're like oh wait this is not the guy we would want to make like a more commercial like he makes more stylized action movies is really what he does you know he's really good at like 300 uh, Watchmen I mean that's his first comic book movie yeah what, and a, a sucker punch, but that's not DC. You know, DC is yeah. a lot deeper than that. Watchmen is, is DC technically, more. but it's kind of like continuity wise. It wasn't in the DC continuity, mm -hmm. like 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 Batman and Superman. I wasn't with them until like 2016 or something. They tried to merge the universes. Anyway, point is, <laughs> um, get into the weeds. but it was it was published by DC and it was like a DC comic, but it wasn't like I I don't know. I would consider that to be not super faithful adaptation. You could still kind of see, like, he doesn't really understand comic book characters, or especially the ones that are his source material. Mm -hmm. And he, he makes his own versions of those characters. And I think that's kind of the problem. Like, um, 
the version of Batman that's in Batman v Superman is very inspired by The Dark Knight Returns. I should have got that comic book out because I have that one too. It's a really good one. Um, but that's like Batman, he's older and he's he's like uh, grittier and he's angrier because he feels like his old methods don't work anymore with these new gangs. They they have more technology. They're like So he, he steps up his game to become more violent like they are to counter them. And that's what you see in Batman v Superman. That's the Ben Affleck Batman essentially is the Dark Knight Returns Batman. So my problem with that is like you're taking this Elseworlds, I call it Elseworlds because that's what they call it if it's not like the main continuity of like um, DC. Mm -hmm. Anything outside of that they would call like an Elseworlds. So like Gotham by Gaslight, it's kind of got stylized, Victorian, right? That's Elseworlds. Dark Knight Returns is Elseworlds. Um, it's not really the main version of Batman. So why would you make your main version of Batman that's going to be in several movies uh, based on an Elseworlds version of him? That's silly. It's like making the Joaquin Phoenix Joker the main Joker. Bad idea. I don't, I don't know. It. Because yeah, he's not know. really the Joker. Okay, yeah. You know? Is that what's going on in the end? Let's, let's not talk about uh, that. We'll yet. talk about the end of yeah. Snyder Cut in a little bit and why it didn't need to be there. Okay. But, um, but yeah, so this is all just stuff I had going into this uh going into the Snyder Cut. This is all thoughts I had after watching the shitty-ass Justice League that we saw in theaters Ooh. that I paid money to see. Can't, I, I feel so <laughs> like off, man. I'm still... <laughs> after four more four years on, I feel so um, ripped off, man. Yeah. It's definitely... It's a complete Ooh. Frankenstein hack job. Um, but there, there's a lot of choices that before going into even the Snyder Cut, I, I question. So Zack Snyder being the architect for this DC Universe... Not a good idea. Even Joss Whedon, who directed the Avengers, wasn't like the architect for these movies. It was um, Kevin Feige, who's like the executive producer on like every Marvel movie, right? So they had a guy that was his separate job was mostly making every sure everything was, you know, continuous and had a, a similar tone. But the director wasn't the one doing that, and it wasn't an edgy director oh, who already it. kind of like, you know. So say what you want about Marvel movies being too much of the same thing. I think that's a fair criticism for a lot of them, but. They didn't choose somebody who had a more nuanced artistic, uh, you know, very narrow uh, artistic window that they shoot in. Like, not just the 4 by 3 but I mean, like, the <laughs> well, we'll talk about that too. But, I mean, just... I wouldn't even fit in the screen right now. Yeah, clearly, like, it's Zack Snyder has that. a tone. Zack Snyder has a tone, it and it's, um, I don't think they wanted that for everything, or they shouldn't have applied it to everything. Uh, the other big choice that kind of it baffles me is making Steppenwolf the main villain. Um, so, like, I know DC characters, and I've known them for a long time, and I barely knew who Steppenwolf was. Barely. Why did, why did he use... I guess he really just, just just took liberties with all the product and, like, the yeah. intellectual properties because you're saying that he's not that big of a deal. No. And he's... He's in this, and this book. And this is the Justice League movie, <laughs> and he chooses him. I mean, a, in, the, in the theatrical cut, he is not a big deal at all. He feels... Like, what is his motivation? He just shows up out of nowhere, and he looks terrible. And yeah. I can't believe you're telling me that he's not a, a big villain. Not usually. At I all. mean, like, sometimes, but, like, I... He's not like Mr. Freeze or the Penguin. Like, he, that's well-known, established uh, villains, but they, they're not, like, the Joker. Yeah. But they're still, uh, like, memorable characters, villains. There were so many other choices they could have had for, like, the first big Justice League villain. It should have just been Dark Side, I think, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have done kind of what they did with Marvel's, I hate to compare it to just Thanos and just say copy Marvel, but, like, they, they have Thanos win in one movie, and then he loses in the next one. Could have done the same thing with this instead of making Steppenwolf just, like, this harbinger for Dark Side. And uh, thank God Dark Side's in the Snyder Cut. I think he looked pretty cool, too. Um, Does that, like, his usual look? Oh, a little bit. Yeah. Kind of looks like you can see him right there in the back there of this. Oh, movie. the right. Okay. Yeah, that's sorry, just... we can't see it. We'll put it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's usually just Pretty gray, close, yeah. orange eyes. He was he was fairly faithful. I was surprised at how how faithful he looks, um, but still looked really cool and very Zack Snyder. So I thought he was it was a good look. Um, but I'm I'm glad they included him because I think without that threat of dark side, Steppenwolf almost feels just forgettable. Like, I, I didn't even know who he was. When I read his name, I had to look up who the fuck is Steppenwolf, because I don't, I don't know him. I've seen him before in the Superman show. Like, I remember his look from that the most. Um, mm -hmm. But even then, I, I, I only remember him as like, oh, he's associated with Darkseid. I don't think of him as his own thing. And they could have chosen so many other, like, 
routes to go it's like a villain for the justice league there's so many other villains that they have that they fight and they could have they could have explored but if you're gonna go this route it's like the new gods i would have just picked dark side from like the get-go and hey he had steppenwolf as like a one of the characters like you know one of his like he starts off like he sends uh steppenwolf first and but he gets defeated then dark side comes in like towards the end essentially it's what they try to do with this cider cut. yeah but he yeah. he's just like chilling i will say after watching the Snyder Cut, I almost feel like my opinion has shifted. I felt this way before going into this movie, but afterwards, I do feel like the Steppenwolf choice almost does make sense here because I think it does too. Because we don't focus on him that much as the villain, we focus on the heroes in this movie, which actually I think works pretty well. So they're almost doing like a reverse Endgame where like we don't really focus on the Marvel heroes in Infinity War, you focus on Thanos, and then mm -hmm. it's more of the opposite in Endgame. It's like, oh, here's a shift to, like, the main characters are, are now, again, the Avengers, right? So I think that this one, it was almost the opposite, where, like, this Justice League movie definitely focused on the League itself and forming the League. And I almost feel like if you put in somebody like Darkseid as the main villain, it might have distracted away from all that, uh, you know, the unity of the League coming together. So I wonder if it almost worked. In, in hindsight, I feel like it actually I think did. It did. Especially after watching the Snyder Cut. Unbelievably. Yeah, right? I can't like, believe they had this the whole time. Okay, we'll get to that. Let's... Are you want to talk about the movie now? Um, yeah, the only other thing I wanted to say is kind of a critique of, like, the, the universe as a whole. Um, I'll be quick. They don't really have, like, a main character. Like, like Tony Stark, I would say, was, like, the main tentpole character for uh, the Marvel Universe. I'm not saying it it's a copy It always comes back to him. Right. But there's a definitely a sense of familiarity with him. He's consistent. Whereas, like, we don't really have a main character in the series at all. Not and we have... I mean, Batman's been in several movies. It feels like he's different in every single one. Superman doesn't feel like the same guy because in Man of Steel, like, I don't think they still knew what he wanted to be yet. He's barely in Batman v Superman. I, does, does Snack... Snack. Zack <laughs> Snyder? He's not a snack. Oh, yeah. But, uh... Did he direct that one? Man of Steel? All three of those. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Just making sure. Man of Steel, Batman, V Superman, and Justice League were all Snyder. Um, so it should have been a very consistent kind of character. I really don't feel like it was though, because they kept trying to change who Superman was. And then even in this one, I mean, he's not really in the movie that much. No, he just comes to save the day at the end. Yeah, but I mean, he still feels like he's kind of a different. I don't really know him. And he's kind of boring, you know? So they don't really have that, like, charismatic character to, to uh, for audiences to be familiar with. Even, I'd say, Captain America in the movies was, like, people grew with him, and they felt familiar with him. But, but, but because there's, like, no consistency with who these people are, we don't really grow with them. We don't grow with Bruce Wayne because he feels like he's a different person every single fucking movie. I mean, he's only been in the two, I guess, the Ben Affleck, Bruce Wayne. But... He's going through a midlife crisis. Can't help <laughs> it, man. It, yeah, it's a, it, I think it's a problem to choose to... To choose that, like I said, the Elseworlds, like, Dark Knight Returns version of Batman. And then he completely shifts by the end of the movie to where he's, like, a different guy. I think that was always Snyder's intention. But the problem is we don't really have anybody we can attach to who's, like, consistent. Even Wonder Woman feels like she's different across movies. It doesn't help that she's played terribly by Gal Gadot. But, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no main character or there's no character continuity. So we don't grow with them. We don't feel attached to them like we did to Tony Stark, I think. So that, that's another big problem of this shared universe, I think. That still holds up after watching the Snyder Cut. Even if the movie itself I thought was pretty good. Um, that's one problem I still feel like. I still don't know who the main or character is or, or who the main characters are. Who should I get attached to? You know, I don't feel like I should get attached to really any of them. But I was getting more interested in like Cyborg and uh, Flash by the end of this movie. So. Oh yeah, they did it way better on this one. <laughs> Let's just get into... I think I'm done with my, my preamble. I think I had everything I... I thought of and this is before this is pre-watching the Snyder Cut so the only thing I knew is the Justice League was shit <laughs> Batman was. versus Superman was shit Man really of Steel was. was I don't really remember it but yeah, I, don't I just think of it as shit so and the Marvel movies are much better more consistent like you said and now this we come to this Justice League the theatrical cut two hours long Snyder Cut, four hours long. Yeah. Four. So what do you think about the length of it? Oh, okay, first, let's talk about the four by three <laughs> format. I play the movie, and it's like, oh, to uh, preserve S S 
snack. I'm calling him Snack Snyder. Okay, Snack. He's a snack. Because you're dyslexic. Yeah. Yeah. He. <laughs> He, oh, the, to protect his artistic vision, we're going to do it in 4-3. You know, like back in the old school where, like, the black bars? Yeah, that's how the movie is formatted. Yeah. Why? The more square. I, I don't know. And after watching the movie, the only thing I think of is, like, I guess he must have just thought his shots were composed better in that 4x3 window. Like, the, the perspective and everything. That's the only thing I could think of because there's no, there's no like, homage to old movies, oh. really, that, like, I've seen it, I think, in that movie, Mank. Um, with Gary Oldman, that might have been in four by three, or in mm -hmm. certain parts. It was for, some movie I watched, which was like an homage to old movies. Do Do you Did know that. why it's in four by three old movies? Because it was a restriction. That's the format. I don't think it was a, really a choice. It's not like an artistic choice to me. I don't I don't see where that you gain. You lose the screen. You lose like screens. just imagine yeah. you looking, and then you have this. Like I don't. Yeah, the only you can thing just move the camera. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I can think of is, like I said, it, maybe you're... I mean, sometimes when I go to crop photos, like I do photography as a uh -huh. hobby, right? And sometimes when I go to, like, crop photos, sometimes I do think it looks better in a more square... Like, the reason you would put something on Instagram as opposed to being on, like, a full, you know, landscape... Some pictures look better, is what I'm saying. So, it, I, the only thing I can think of is that when he was, like, looking at all, all his footage or his shots or whatever, that they just look better in that square crop than they would have on the full 16 by 9. But it's weird. I will I will say, I just don't... At just, first, it bothered me, uh, and then... I mean, it doesn't really more, bother me, because I'm used to watching stuff like that. It's just like... It's a weird It just feels pretentious. It does. It, it just does. feels like, oh... This whole movie let's do pretentious. Let's, let's just do something different. And, like, the the uh, shot of it, like, the disclaimer in the beginning, it just pissed me off. If yeah. they just, just showed it in 4 by 3 I'm like, okay, it's weird. But you might have uh, thought something was wrong, though. That's the next thing. You might have okay. been like, what's wrong with my TV? Because it shouldn't yeah, be like this. Guess. But I will say, as the movie went on, I didn't even notice anything. Oh, yeah. That's, I don't I don't really care. I just put the disclaimer, like, this artistic vision. I just yeah. think the whole story about this movie, I just can't believe all the shit that has, like... It's pretty crazy. It's, it's, it's unprecedented, ugh. really. Um, yeah, things might have changed after this. But I got to say, the look of the movie is way better. Oh. It's like unbelievably oh. better, and even like you can look at this and tell that there's green screen uh -huh. and there's CGI, and I can't believe us who are like the biggest critics of CGI, we're it. like, this looks pretty good. I can't believe it, man. <laughs> it did look I was, pretty good. The whole entire uh, movie, the uh, theatrical cut, I was complaining the whole time. Oh, it's horrible. Like, this looks like crap. This looks like crap. Yeah, I was just saying that was the thing I was saying the most of the movie, oh, but. Did you hear me at all say that at all? No, I remember us saying this actually looks good. I'm like, wait, is this, is this good CGI? Like, what <laughs> what happened the first time? Why isn't this in the first movie? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple shots where I was like, yeah, yeah. that doesn't look great, but like, I'd say 90, 95 percent of the yeah. CGI in this movie looked pretty damn good. And the the ending when they go into I don't know what what is that like the fortress the big I don't even know what to call giant it. Giant <laughs> It looks like a testicle. It man. does look like a giant nut. Um, <laughs> but Steppenwolf just like, whatever, he sections off of this area around a nuclear power plant or whatever. Yeah. And merges to make the unity or whatever. I remember that looking like oh, it the greatest. Horrible. The the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. Horrible. Just, just, it looks terrible. But now it looks great. It's yeah. one of the best looking scene, like uh, sequences in the, the movie. The, the parts where uh, the flies, I don't know what they're called. What are they called? The uh, demons? Parademons. Parademons. Yeah. When he's shooting the gun, that looks, like, so good. I don't understand. Yeah. I'm like, wow, I gotta look at that again. Like, compare it. And the, everything's so different. I don't know. It was a great climax. But, yeah. but, but, like, it was consistent all the way through. Like you said, it was, like, oversaturized in the first one. Oversaturated. And yeah, oh, yeah, I said, yeah. Saturated. And then I was like, yeah, it looks way better. They, they toned it down and it's consistent. I mean, but the backgrounds, I don't know how they, uh, they did they really just redo it? I don't know what is different. It, I mean, I don't know. It looks like just the color grading is, uh, but it looks like that whole last sequence was like a completely different, the story of it was different. Uh -huh. You know, like, because there's not that stupid family that Flash goes to save. Uh -huh. Instead, he's trying to like, you know, wow. get the speed force to like charge the mother box. It was way more interesting that way. Way more. We, Everybody so had much more of a crucial part in that at that ending uh -huh. 
in the Snyder Cut. Like, it's it almost made sense that there's a league of all these people. Like, Flash, I think, like, in the, the Whedon version, the theatrical version, they didn't know what to do with them. Because they're just like, okay, go, go save a family now. Man, you but the, the alternative is so great. One of the yeah. best moments, but... Um, yeah, the look of the movie is just so much oh, better. They, so much better. So, I... I just can't believe it. Yeah. You, like, there are, so the most of it, it's not a reshoot, right? It's just the original footage? Uh, there were reshoots, but yeah, most of the movie is not a reshoot. Most of the movie is is as it was four years ago. And they still butchered that. Warner it, Brothers, I hate you. <laughs> I can't but I believe this. DC needs to get... No, they'll never, they'll never sell it, I don't think. No. I think there was talks about it, but they need it. Like, I can't believe that. They messed this up so bad they really first time. but yeah the look of the movie i'm the biggest cg critic and it looks great for the most part yeah and then you know the scene where uh cyborg oh backstory for cyborg work oh that's so great the look of it when he's playing football it looks great yeah and you you can tell it's cg but it's okay it looks good it, yeah it's it's in line with what's going on, on the screen in the background I think just, like, it's because Snyder's stuff never really looks real. Mm -hmm. It does work for, like, more fantastical stuff, like comic book characters oh, yeah, in that sense. Or like, 300 never looked real. Mm -hmm. But that was okay. It didn't need to. And I think... It's not going for that. What's that? It's not going for that, like, the real... Exactly, thing. yeah. So, um, I felt the same way. Yeah, like you said about the cyborg scene where he's got these flashbacks and even, like, the parts where he's, like, seeing the world, like, a visual metaphor of him, like, connecting to the world. Also, how cool was that? Like, Yeah, it's awesome, man. It's a good visualization. And in the beginning, the theatrical cut, he's just talking about, like, oh, I just can see everything. Yeah. But they show it. <laughs> show, don't tell. It's so yeah. simple. <laughs> it's just a throwaway line, and then they show it. It's awesome. Unbelievable. There's so much in that movie that, like, I I can't believe it was cut. I it, I'm shocked it was cut because it it enhances the movie and the characters and the story just so much more. Like it it's almost crucial. It's part of the plot. Like, you don't understand. <laughs> like I I don't know what's going on in the movie. I like, I don't understand it because everything was cut out. Yeah. The part where Wonder Woman goes into the cave and like she sees Dark Side and like the the prophecy and he, she goes tells Batman. That was not in the original cut. I think they, they have it, but it's so quick. I don't, I, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't either. It's supposed to buy it so fast. I don't remember how she found out, how she knew. I yeah. remember her seeing the arrow that her mom shot. Yeah, I remember that part. I don't remember her just, like, going to investigate. I don't either. That. Or the part where they're, uh, like, they're the ship. Where they, they explain it, like, are they're what investigating they're it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't help it. It's so much they cut out of the movie. It's shocking. It's not even an extra fluff. It's the plot. Yeah. It's the, what's it about? Ugh, but, I cannot believe but it. while we're on this subject, there was quite a bit of fluff. Oh, no. Yeah, there is. There's there is definitely. quite a bit of fluff. So, yeah, especially in the beginning. Bro, the, the Amazons, when they're fighting, so, it's, it's just this. What, what are they yelling like, oh, no. Slow motion, yeah. And, and the, the lamentation. Oh, Ancient oh, lamentation. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> According to our subtitles. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> oh my god. I I hate overdone uh, that was too slow much. mo. Yeah. And like in the beginning where they're showing uh the previous movie, it's like all oh, slow motion, they show every character. That is so Zack Snyder. That is the most if you watch There's a reason why this is four hours long. Yeah, if you go and watch Watchmen again or even three hundred, it's like every shot's fucking slow mo. That's just his thing. But it just it was too much. Um, yeah. And that's that's shorter movies. Yeah. It doesn't need it. No, it doesn't. And so there's that, and there's just, like, long takes. Like, takes where, like, I was like, okay, I get that this person's walking. You can cut that and trim that down. Remember we were talking about Mortal Kombat? <laughs> so, like, Mortal Kombat 11, uh, also, like, I mean, it's a video game, but still, like, they did these really weird long takes where, like, somebody's strange. walking down a hall, and they show the whole thing. whole thing. That's Dude, the first really thing you learn in film school. <laughs> Is you cut when you need to, don't yeah. It's like don't leave it too long on the screen. Yeah, and Snyder just the Keep the pacing whole up. time just kept like all these like shots are so fucking long. The takes are so fucking long, and I didn't understand why he needed to do that. He could just cut this movie down by probably that's, like that's the biggest sin of this movie. Yeah, it's it's way too long. And you know what? It could have honestly, if this movie was even three hours, 
It would have been fucking awesome. I think so too. I cut, yeah, because I was getting like tired of it. Like, okay, come on, come on. After yeah. like a, like three hour mark, yeah, three and a half hour, yeah. But that's like towards the end. Like we get the epilogue, but we'll talk about that then. Yeah. Um, what else? You you mentioned that he Snyder he it feels like he did it on purpose to get every little like inch of like minute try to get as much as possible because they cut everything from the original. It's like, I'm putting everything in there. I don't care. <laughs> I feel like he was, like, he must have been so pissed. I don't mean, I would have been. Yeah, man. I would have been too. They I they totally pissed. hacked his vision to shreds and I, I do think that. I think that this was almost a reaction. Mm-hmm. Like, this is like, here, you want to cut my shit up? I'm going to make this long and pretentious and in four by three, motherfuckers. <laughs> like, I really think that. Is that really his original vision that I don't know. know. They Lab- labored a point, but... I get why you'd have that initially is like your long cut, but then you make your edits, right? Mm-hmm. Your director's cut yeah. should be like cutting, should be cutting stuff out that doesn't need to be there. And a lot of it, I think, is is fluff. And just like you're already in a long movie, you cut these long takes out, you know, and cut the scenes as low as just. Oh, there's man. too much because it you didn't know how connect. I hate romance, bad romance movies. Yeah, it's just I wanted to fast forward that so bad. I didn't care at all. Well, Except they, for, don't, they don't support it in that movie. There's no reason for it to really even be there. And then, like, there's a shot where... Or there's, like, a, a tiny little bit of dialogue where Batman's, like, Lois is the key. Somehow I know it. Did they ever explain that? Is it because she's pregnant with his kid? I still don't guess. think they really explained it. No. And I guess it's going to be explained in the next movie. In the sequel. That oh, will never happen. Never ha- well, it might. I feel like it might happen now. You think? No, I don't. Hopefully. I don't. I don't I know. Wonder. I don't. I don't think it. I don't, they don't deserve the money. Warner Brothers. <laughs> fuck. Man. They don't deserve it. I. Would, I hope they have to sell it. Something like they go out of business after this. I hate it. I hate that. It's so pretty much. frustrating. Um. But yeah. I, I. I don't know. I mean, it's probably doubtful. I know Zack Snyder doesn't really want to return for another Justice League movie. I wonder know. why. I don't know. <laughs> um. But yeah, I wonder if they'd even try to revisit this, like, and think about it. You know. I don't know. It, I think this is something we kind of had to wait to see release and like to determine whether or not they might actually do a sequel and I think I mean I don't I don't I haven't checked like uh, articles about a subscriber uptick for HBO Max or anything but I bet there's a lot of people that did oh yeah they did because like there was these fan petitions to see this movie you finally have a chance to uh-huh. see this movie you'd think they'd want to watch it be interesting to see the reports for that yeah when it comes out um so if I mean that's I think this is all a sign, though, for, like, studios, especially Warner Brothers, but just studios in general, like, listen to the fans. Like, they, they know what they wanted to see. They wanted to see a movie that was, at the very least, one cohesive vision, mm-hmm. you know? And is this movie perfect? Like, no. But I will say, even though this was not the Justice League movie I wanted, at least the Snyder Cut felt like it was a, a decent movie on its own. Like, even if this is not the way I wanted um, Batman to be, like this was a good movie. It Gross. honestly was. I can't. I I I expected this shit on this so bad. I couldn't wait. Yeah. And this is this is such a shocker. <laughs> it's such a like turn for the better. I, I'm I'm happy to see it. Yeah. yeah. But it makes me sad that it, it didn't come out originally like that. And now we're not gonna get more probably. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, the good and the bad of it. Cause I feel like you know what? If they would have forced him to cut this movie down to like three hours or two and a half hours, two forty five, whatever actually a fucking awesome movie yeah. but because he has the freedom to make it four hours <sighs> okay too much and too little i, I want to talk about in between some other things too some added stuff in there that did not need to be there okay well, and i think it was probably planting the seed for future movies like the introduction of ryan Choi, the adam like that was kind of cool but i think his role thankfully was more just like he was in Star Labs, and only in moments where they were talking about stuff happening in Star Labs, so it wasn't like throw in forced character. Like they were implying he's probably gonna be the Adam in the universe. It's, that was it's perfect. Born. It's natural. Yeah, it makes sense. That was a perfect cameo, I thought. Like in the outside, it looks it's, it looks like inconspicuous that he's there. Yeah, and you and didn't he, even know who that was. Oh no, I was like, dude, that's the Adam, and you're like, what? what? And I'm like, he's like Ant Man, but for DC. I'm like, okay. Yeah, like. That's cool. They just have him in there, and they don't really 
get into his powers or anything yet. Like, that's something they're just going to explore, and they're planting the seed. That's cool. The Martian Manhunter thing, though? Yeah. It's like, and I love to see him. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see him so bad, like, in live action or in the movies. It's just, like, his part is it's so pointless to this movie. Why like, is he why? talking to Lois? That's what I don't get. I don't... And then he changes into the uh, general? I mean, that's, like, his probably his identity on Earth oh, most of the time. Like, oh, he, so the whole entire time that was him? Yeah, in this oh, that's, that's pretty cool. That's a cool reveal. That is a cool reveal. But it's just like, why? There's so many questions it raises. Like, one, why does he do nothing this whole movie except talk to Lois Lane? Like, what? what is his purpose? Why is he just, he knows he can help. He's got powers. And then why at the end is he like, oh, there's a war coming. I know it's coming. Well, if you knew it was coming, why didn't you help like, exactly like 30 minutes ago? Oh, you know, it's going to be explained in Justice League 2. <laughs> oh, oops. Oops, they messed it up, know. man. His whole scene with Batman was so dumb. I yeah. wish that whole last like fifteen minutes of the Snyder Cut was just taken out. Oh, Jared Leto's man. Joker. You want to talk about it? Yes. So okay, the very end. There's an epilogue. I I like most of the epilogue. It's like it's just wrapping up everybody, right? Like they yeah. wrap up Superman, like where he's gonna be, like Flash. You know, he's getting into the. That's the same from the theatrical cut. But I thought that worked. It made a lot more sense now. You know, um, Cyborg still. Like, it, it just wrapped up everybody's, and, like, the shots in that were really cool. Like, Wonder Woman looking off into the sunset. Like, it's epic. Like, that was that was actually really cool. It makes you want more. I'm like, oh, I can't wait for the next one. Yeah. The only one I, the, the only thing I hated was Batman's whole stupid nightmare sequence. Why did they need to show that? What is going on? I think they keep, like, again, this is, like, they're, they're teasing, because I think he's getting premonitions of the future, of what's going to happen when Darkseid comes. So, my thinking, my theory is that, um, when he said, like, Lois is the key or whatever, too, you know how Superman turns evil in this nightmare sequence or whatever? I'm thinking probably Lois's son. Okay. Or his Superman's kid is, will be the key. Is that, like, the, so that's one of the stories from the comic books? No. That's just so what it's made up. I just don't think it's where they were going with that. I think, because that, I'm just trying to think of why they included Lois in this movie in the capacity they did. Yeah, she's the pregnancy in it thing. a lot. And then they, why are they showing this flash forward if it's not even like we're not close to being there yet? Mm. So, so you don't like that approach so far? No, because it's just it's like, why would you show us that if we're like I don't know? It's just not working for me. And I I hate Jared Leto's Joker. More yeah, than I, this I is the first time I've seen it, and I was not impressed. Uh, I. I didn't that really laugh. Like is terrible. I it's don't. horrible. He's trying to. He's trying to be so different. Just don't be different. Don't be that different. He has an iconic laugh. Get it right. That's, yeah. And then the, the dialogue between them. It's like what is going on? It was fucking pointless. And then oh yeah, Batman just says like I'll fucking kill you. Like, I knew it was bro. what they were talking. So they were implying that he killed Robin. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Right, and that's like famous. Like in Arkham Knight, that's like the centerpiece of the story. Spoiler alert! But like Jason Todd, Robin was murdered by him. Yeah. Or whatever. So I, that's... I prefer this Batman so much more. <laughs> yeah, he just he's he's more stoic and he has everything under control. The Arkham Batman was like the encapsulation of what Batman always should have been. Yeah. Like it, it's like almost the best versions of every Batman were combined to make this Batman. So I think that's why it works better. But like I just that whole scene just cut it. It was so stupid. And that was reshoots. That was stuff that like they spent mm -hmm. money. Warner Brothers put money into waste of time, it. waste of time, waste of money. The Snyder cut before that was fine. I would say yeah. I think the Snyder cut ends at the epilogue, like when Superman rips his shirt. Yeah, that's the end. That shouldn't be the end. End of the movie, or maybe. Well, they didn't show anything with Batman because like that was Batman's ending. But show Batman's ending, end the movie, and don't make it that stupid nightmare thing. Just do something else. And but... what's and what's the point of showing it the epilogue if there's not gonna be another movie? Just leave it out. Like deleted scenes. In the like the DVD release of this Blu-ray release, just do that. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. need to be in the, in the final cut. Yeah, it shouldn't have been in there because it doesn't make any sense anymore. It, but even like if they were to make another movie, still, I feel like it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Like it would have just been kind of forced and thrown into this movie, which is already long and overly long. Just it's not a, it's not a good Joker, I don't think. No, he's not a good Joker at all. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that it, this will be the last appearance of that Joker, probably. And I thought I'd give him a chance because. Like, in, like I said, in Suicide Squad, he's, like, barely in it. And, like, I don't think there was even enough time for him to be good at yeah. all in that movie. But, like, there's time to shine for this one. And I don't think he... I don't know. I don't know if it was the direction or is it him. 
I think everything. But the I writing think, too. The writing was horrible in that scene. Like just yeah. And it's dragged out for so fucking long. That scene was so fucking long, for yeah. just this little bit of dialogue that's it's because, inconsequential. It's because it's Joker and Batman, man. People love to see that. I love seeing Joker and Batman, but yeah. that that no. And that's, that's like one of my favorite, you know, duo dynamics, dynamics, yeah. dynamics yeah. in in superhero, like comics and all that it's it's iconic and i think that's why they they thought it would just work if they just put batman and joker together but it's, it's always about chemistry too right like keaton and, and jack nicholson had chemistry and even i'd say christian bale and, and Heath ledger did yeah you know and mark hamill kevin conroy there's there's just something there that's like natural and it's working there's like a duality and th these two i don't even first off i don't know jared leto's joker enough and a lot of it's got to be like um you know, uh, precedent and knowledge. Like, I know who Joker is. I know what he's done. I know he's killed Robin. I know he's fucking psychotic and all that stuff. That informs my um, idea of him, mm -hmm. right? So, But I, at the same time, this is a new version of him, so I don't know how much of that is pouring into this version because I don't, I don't know him. I think we need a break from Joker for a while. Yeah. And we have the other Joker mo movie where he's not really even Joker. What, who is that? God, I hate, I hate <laughs> Joker so much. I hate the Joaquin Phoenix Joker with a passion but but they just use okay we're not gonna talk about that yeah, this is we'll review that another time. it's off topic but i want to talk about do you, you want to say something no no what are you saying i want to talk about how awesome the ending is yeah the climax the climax not the epilogue my climax God, it's, it's so, so much, much better, better. <laughs> i know we talked about the look of it but the action okay the action scenes throughout throughout it's not cut up like how it wasn't in, in the original release, and you could actually see what's going on. It makes more sense. Like we're in, they're, they're in uh, the underground of Gotham City. Yeah, under Gotham Harbor. And yeah. yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Like you can see what's going on, and it's just so much better. It's not cut up to hell. And then later on in the climax, it's so great the action, and you. I'm getting hyped watching. I'm like, I can't believe this. Yeah. And the the final scene where. Uh, Flash, he has to rewind time just by running. I don't know this, okay? I didn't know he could do that. They mentioned it before, but, like, they didn't show it. But they show it in this, and he rewinds time. And it's so awesome that they coming back, like, from yeah, the like, life. like, Superman, like, got decimated. Yes. And, like, his flesh come back. Literally, that's awesome. This awesome scene was visual. so good. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm so mad. That this was I was like, I want a Flash movie, man. <laughs> they are making a Flash movie, actually. Are they really? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, it was like with that flash in it. Man, that, that look, I wish they had that before. Yeah, that we was always the plan, but they are he's, still he's a good flash, I think. It. Yeah, he is. I don't know, is that like the normal character of the flash? He's younger and like more uh, comedic? He is more comedic, okay. always. Flash right. is always like the comic relief, but um, there's different versions of him. That Barry Allen is a little more neurotic than uh, you usually see. Mm -hmm. um, but. I think it works for this context, and I'm excited to see more of him. Yeah, they, we need some little bit of comedy because this yeah. movie is dark. Yeah. But the okay, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. But man, the scene where he comes, it brings everybody back to life by running. I can't believe that. That's so awesome. I didn't even think of him doing that. And it's <laughs> cool, so like they, it's not out of nowhere either because he did rewind time before. In the yeah, yeah, earlier, a little so, bit, and he implies he's like, I, I don't like to do it because I, it's my rule. I don't break my rule, and I, so yeah, it's a so. thing that like they they didn't just throw it in there. He randomly can do it. They imply he can do it, and then they show it, and it was glorious to watch. And then they all like defeat Seven with so They all it's like a group attack. Yeah, and the Wonder Woman cuts his head off. His head goes to the portal where Darkseid is watching. Through the boom tube, over to Apocalypse, and Darkseid just steps on it with his foot. It's like, <laughs> disappointment, man. Like, why do you even... That was, was like, brutal man. as fuck. I could not believe that was... I was like, I can't movie. believe it. Yeah, this is Logan or Deadpool? Come yeah, on, man. it was super... That's another thing, too, is I wonder if a lot of that would have just been toned down, because they probably would have made this movie PG-13. I'm so... It see, this is... Yeah, I'm cut. telling you, man. Blood and gore... It, it's like it just raises the stakes up for me like it yeah. makes it i don't know i i just personally like it and it makes it cooler to me and like it's, it's just awesome that they did that and you don't really use you usually don't see that in like marvel movies you don't see like stuff like that no because that I mean they always tone it down yeah. i feel like yeah the for reason the pg 13 yeah yeah and i i feel like they still could have gotten away with a lot of the violence yeah. in a pg-13 movie because i've seen some pg-13 movies with even zack snyder's like batman v superman was pg-13 there's a lot in there 
Yeah. Like, I remember Batman, like, throwing a guy against a wall and just a blood splat Killing behind Killing people, man. Right. Like, that was, people. in theaters, PG-13. Like, it pushed the boundaries, but I feel like you still could have got away with it. And, like, like you said, more impact, higher stakes if there's blood. And that's what Snyder does. Like, that's Snyder's, like, think he does a lot of high violence. And I'd say this one wasn't even as, as gruesome as it could have no, been. No, it could have been way more. Yeah. But I think it was done right. Yeah. When it needed... Uh, it's like oh it's more impactful if you do less of it and the action in this movie was iconic there are things about it i remember like yeah. I, I don't remember any of the fight scenes in the theatrical cut like i don't remember anything that happens at all no. I, I remember the superman fight scene a little bit where he wakes up and he's kind of freaking oh, out yeah, that, that was like one of the that was kind only of kind of good scenes yeah but it's in this and it's i don't know it's is it really even different no it's mostly the same so that was snyder yeah. again like a lot of the the good action scenes that were in the other one or just good scenes in general are still in this one. You know? Man. Uh, I don't know. So, yeah, this is a darker tone. Like you said, it, they wanted to probably tone it down and, yeah. man, that's just just messes up the movie so dialogue. Much. I mean, not... Oh, great. yeah, the end of the, it's not comedic as comedic. Not, not half as comedic because it's not forced, which uh-huh. I think works better. Yeah. I don't know if I needed all that stupid forced humor that Joss Whedon put in there, because that was just like, okay, I know we are just trying to lighten the tone, and it's just not working. This isn't Guardians of the Galaxy, this isn't Avengers, this is its own thing. Just let it be its And own it works. Thing. It works way better. It's not as funny. It's a dark movie. Yeah, it's pretty depressing, too. Huh? Yeah, but I think it honestly was more impactful for that reason. Yeah. Like, Cyborg story was more impactful. Oh, yeah, let's talk about Cyborg. Cyborg. I can't... This guy is so forgettable in the original one. But he's the best character in this I, one. I'd argue he's the he's main, the main character. character. I couldn't believe it. I thought it'd be Batman, and Superman can't be it. But I thought it'd be Batman, maybe Flash, maybe Wonder yeah. Woman, whatever. Uh, but Cyborg, he's he's my favorite character in this. And like his, they, they show the backstory. They they actually show his mom. So and like he, I didn't even know he had the mother, one of the mother boxes in the original. Yeah, I don't. I was so confused. I'm like, he has one. I couldn't remember where the third one came from. In the casual cut, like it's because so... I knew, because I knew uh, Aquaman's people had it. Yeah, but I didn't know the third one. Right, it I wasn't remember. it wasn't clear. And then his his dad, like his relationship with his dad, they show it better, and like he actually dies. His dad did he yeah. die in the original? Yeah, no, I don't think they should. No, I don't think he died in the in the jaw speeding cut at all. I don't think so. <sighs> But they show so much more and actually make me care about him. His his uh, origin, like turning into Cyborg, is yeah. fucking awesome. Uh-huh, Again, yeah. CGI, but it looked fu- when he's fusing with the mother box, that was fucking sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that CG looked great. Yeah. And you can't really do that with part particle effects. So practical effects, part of it. Yeah, practical effects. So I'm, yeah, I was satisfied with his story, and I want to see maybe even more of him. You know, like his character, like he's more like serious, but. And like him and Flash, I think they make a good duel. Yeah. Because he's more um, comedic Flash, so I like I like that. And yeah. Wonder Woman, they need a new one. <laughs> I hate her. I cannot stand her. She does cool stuff, but I don't even like when she like does stuff. She's she always yelling. I, I still of her. I don't care. Asian levitation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally every time she's on screen, just some. Oh, oh yeah, she just comes to the screen for a second. Scandinavian singer in the background. Oh yeah. Oh, Wait, can we talk about that Aquaman oh, yeah. scene? What the Aquaman scene with the? Why was that in there? Oh, uh, when he just saves the guy and he goes back. No, the no that scene, and then the the girl singing on the shore. Oh, wow. the Scandinavian singers. But she she's in love. <laughs> she's in love. It was fucking weird. She's all like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always like. The Scandinavian singers say when he goes back into the water. Like, I guess he's like a god to them. I guess. They did try to make it seem like these were god, like, creatures. Like, these mm-hmm. are gods that were on Earth. Which I did kind of like. I think that works for this movie, too. Like, DC characters are always so powerful if they're... Oh, yeah, they really yeah. are. Um, but he definitely, he definitely went with that messiah complex for all of them. You know, like... Yeah, because they did that with uh, Superman, too. Yeah, so. they do. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess... I didn't really, really look at it that way yeah that makes sense yeah I think it was definitely on purpose but I think that scene still should just been cut out it was weird totally yeah totally I mean I do sense. like his introduction more yeah because it's more drawn out and it's more impact to it yeah yeah but yeah that scene is like whatever <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. But, yeah. like, that's all the characters, right? Uh, yeah, there's, you know, Aquaman. I mean, they, they introduced Les Luthor for a little bit. Stupid. Should have cut him out. But they did an interesting thing where they... Les Luthor tells... That scene also is completely different. It is. From the theatrical actually... cut. It was a post credit scene in the theatrical cut, and uh, Les Luthor tells Deathstroke he wants to make a Injustice League, essentially. So they were teasing a, a future Injustice League. In this one, he's just like... Oh yeah, Batman's Bruce Wayne, which I think was supposed to be for Ben Affleck's Batman movie. It's never gonna happen now, but it was more interesting. It was more interesting, you know, because then you know it's setting up uh, an interesting story there. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, Most of the else? characters were pretty good. I mean, there was uh, Superman's empty. He's always empty. I never like Superman. I don't like Superman either. I don't get it. He I sucks. It. But everybody else was like a uh, main... Batman. Okay, okay, Batman. I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, this Ben Affleck Batman was not doing yeah, it. Yeah, man, he's not doing it. And uh, all, the, all the characters are great. Well, yeah, I mean, come out, I'm talking about Cyborg and Flash. I'm Cyborg, sorry. Flash, and Aquaman was better. Yeah, Aquaman yeah. is better. Yeah. He's he's different from other characters. He's yeah. kind of like going against what they're saying. You kind of need that. Yeah, yeah. Straight guy almost for yeah. this group where everybody thinks all these bad ideas are good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Batman... Yeah, the characters, some characters, yeah, and Batman, they don't do him justice. So, yeah, they were justice. <laughs> yeah, this and version this. of Batman, I think they definitely tried to to give him an arc. Like, Batman v Superman to this one, like, he changes his... Martha. I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> mad about it. <laughs> we're not going to talk about that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, that decision to make Batman kind of changes his, uh, his uh, mindset, I don't think it's working. So, I'm kind of glad... In a way, that this this is it, and there's no more Snyderverse. Because honestly, while there was some interesting things they were trying to plant, like the whole Deathstroke thing being the next villain for Batman, kind of cool. Deathstroke's never really been on screen before. So he looked awesome. He looked awesome. Yeah. So uh, that could have been interesting, a new uh, a new version of Batman and everything. But for the most part, just I'm kind of glad this is it. I'm kind of glad that this universe isn't going any further, really. And, I mean, there's still being movies made, like Shazam 2, and technically it's supposed to be part of the same universe, but it's so different, it doesn't even feel like it. So I don't care. You know, Wonder Woman 3, whatever, that's fine. Wait, the one, the 1984 one? That's the second one. They're making a third one. After that disaster? Yeah. I didn't see it. 1984 is fucking horrible. No. But this one, they don't even have, like, a consistent tone anymore. Nothing. So I'm fine with them just doing whatever they want. Just you know, and individual just, movies, yeah. and no continuity between them. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. And they I should have done that in the first place. Yeah. Honestly, I know they wanted to go the Marvel route, and I see why. It's cool that these characters cross over. Big money. Yeah. And it could have been cool, but they just rushed it, and they chose the wrong architect for it. It should never have been Zack Snyder. Mm -hmm. You know, he's too nuanced. He does things his own way. It would never have worked for a whole movie universe of Zack Snyder tone characters. Would not have worked. So, um, yeah, closing thoughts, I suppose. I'm just really pleased, actually, with the mm -hmm. Snyder Cut, but I'm at the same time glad that this is not going further. I still feel that way. Even after really? watching it and thinking mm -hmm. this was a good version, I'm, I don't think this is the version of Justice League I want the world to be familiar with. Okay, yeah, because with me, this is what I'm really only familiar with. Yeah. Other than Batman, I don't know much about the Justice League, and yeah, I, I, if you don't, if you feel like it could have been better, like different stories, like a better, like the way to go about it, then yeah, yeah I want to, I don't want to see anything further, but yeah, I was excited, man. I was like, man, I can't wait till the next one. And then I realized it's probably not gonna be the next one, because you know, I, I, what they had here was pretty good. Yeah, and I can't believe they cut it. Like, I was excited for the the version of Flash, which they are making a Flash movie. Yeah, uh, point. Point. yeah, and uh, they might have Michael Keaton's Batman in it because he's gonna go with like the multiverse or whatever. So mm. that could be interesting. I'm interested to see that. And um, and I like Cyborg in this movie. Kind of sad now. There's never gonna be a Cyborg movie. Um, you think he can carry a movie by himself? He's kind of boring though. Like as his character, he doesn't have personality. Or does? Is that just because of the movie? I don't know if it's the movie, the actor. It's too much to tell. But I thought he was interesting. Like, his story was interesting. Yeah, his story is interesting. But uh, you think he could hold a movie by himself? I, they would have to probably alter him a little bit or explore him a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I don't know. There's the potential there. 
but to potential will never see. I don't know if you know this, but the actor played Cyborg Ray Fisher like called out Joss Whedon and Warner Brothers for like being racist on set and abusive. Not. Yeah, that's another thing too. I don't know if you even realized, but like he's been calling out like Warner Brothers ever since like Justice League was released. Like really? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know anything about that. Yeah, he accused Joss Whedon of being toxic and racist and stuff. I guess. And like, Man, I don't. Know. <laughs> they picked him over. His Snyder, man, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. And um, so that's all. So he's never going to come back forever. Okay. He's ne he's part of Waves of Warner Brothers now to the point where he's never going to come back. Mm -hmm. But I was I'm surprised they even kept him in the Snyder Cut after all that. But I guess it's like, he's already shot all these scenes. They can't just take him out, you know? No. So, uh, yeah, we'll probably never see a Cyborg movie. We'll probably never see these characters explored. And those two, like Flash and Cyborg, are really the ones I want to see more of, you know? Aquaman the movie I never saw. I have no desire to. It looks pretty like CGI puke, so I have no desire to see it. Um, yeah, I don't think I can watch him carry movies. He's not that good of an actor either. Yeah, Jason Momoa is. He's more just a straight guy, stoic kind of, which I think worked in the Justice League because he's surrounded by these other characters and he's yeah. more like distrusting of the surface world. And I Wonder, thought that worked. Yeah, Wonder Woman, one the the Wonder Woman woman uh, movie. Ah, oh, so hard. The tongue twister. Uh, I feel like. I watched the first one, I didn't really like it, and the second one's probably worse, right? The second one's horrible. I think yeah. the first one's a decent movie. But, I, don't, um, I just hate her. I don't, I'm she's just, not a good actress. I, okay. <laughs> she's not charismatic at all. No. She's boring, and so I will never watch one with just her in it. She's horrible in, in the newest one. Like, like I didn't think they... I can't believe some of those takes, like, in Wonder Woman 1984 were just, like, the final take. I was like, this is horrible acting. This is, this is your main Are star. Are you surprised, man? No, I swear. she's not a good actress. Just her looks. She never has been. She never has been a good actor, but it's... It was really surprisingly bad. Um, but, yeah, I guess closing thoughts. I'm just kind of like... This was... This was a really good movie. Yeah. And I think, like, you release a version of this movie at, like, three and a half hours. You trim down some of that, the fat, you yeah. know, the bullshit, the the slow motion, the dragged out scenes of people walking. Yeah, that's the biggest flaw. And cut some of the, the unnecessary dialogue. This movie is actually really fucking good. Like, so I was, I was pleased that I didn't waste my time. Um, and this was a historic movie. And I hope that, it like... Was that not just Warner Brothers, but every studio takes this as an example of like, this is why you should listen to the fans and not your stupid executives. They don't know what they're fucking doing. They get paid a bunch of money to put out no commercial reason. bullshit and it's not flying anymore. The, the era of Rotten Tomatoes and movies being, you know, scrutinized before they ever come out. Like, we can review movies and we can tell if it's gonna be a good movie, we're not gonna go see it. That's why Justice League fucking bombed the box office in the US because the reviews were horrible. And Man, I should have paid attention more. I feel so bad giving money to them. I mean, I was going to go see it no matter what. I had to see it and see it for myself. This is a movie I had to see. This was a like story for me because I've always wanted to see it. Yeah, and I know? can't... Hey, I just cannot believe that movie. I'll give it a 1 out of 10. <laughs> Lowest score ever. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's not a finished movie, and that pisses me off that people, they get away with it. And, like, I feel bad for Snyder that he couldn't release his movie, his vision. I mean... I was making fun of him. I thought this was going to be a terrible movie. I was like, man, this is not going to be good. But it's actually good. I cannot... I, and I have no investment in Justice League or any characters except for Batman. And I, I really like this movie. And like I said, like in other movies, like the, the Lord of the Rings, I would just... You know, they, they separate it in parts. I would just watch certain parts. <laughs> You, because I mean, it's, you don't like whole, long movies, man. huh? I I do like long movies, but you only like Pulp Fiction. That's the only long. Pulp movie Fiction's not even that long. It's like it? two and a half hours. It's a long movie. It's like okay, like once you go past three hours, come on, man, come on. And the Lord of the Rings is nine hours, really. Yeah, it's a long. Movie. Okay, that's what I mean. Uh, but what the, this is a four-hour superhero movie. Come on, man. You don't really need all that. No, this movie did not need to be three four hours, hours long. long. Is I think or three and a half. Yeah, but I mean, you cut the nightmare sequence, you cut down like oh, I said, yeah. all that fat. You would have had like a three-hour movie, probably. Yeah. yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I like the tone of it. I like it's consistent. That now the dumb jokes. I like darker tones usually, and it fits for this universe. It's a different. It's a nice uh, difference between Marvel and DC. They're not the same. They're not cutting jokes every two seconds. It's not as lighthearted. It's like dark and it's, it's gory and you feel it and the yeah. impact it's like some emotional scenes and i couldn't believe it 
I had no investment in this at all. I, I was just like, this is this is a joke. It's not a joke anymore. No. And I couldn't believe it, man. I could not. This is the, one of the biggest surprises in a long time for me. It's just like I actually enjoyed it. I want to watch some of it. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to recut it so I can watch it. Yeah, the, in my Andrew version. <laughs> the end. You need that one now. That's that's the one. The three hour cut with all yeah. the fat taken out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but this was this was surprisingly or actually really good movie. Um. And yeah, like you said, they don't need to copy Marvel. This was proof of it. I mean, this is just proof of their failure too. That's really what it is. That's all. That's the worst part is that. Instead of just being like a good movie that could have helped them establish something new and cool, yeah. it really is just a testament to studio interference. It's really what it is. It's always the case, man. Yeah. So many stories. They don't know what, the, or we're not going to get into that, but that's always that. It's related. It's, yeah, it is. Um, that's what happens when something gets too big. They, like, outside hands, you know, the corporate executives, they want to put their hands on it. They, they know everything. No, just because you get paid millions of dollars, you know it was probably a fluke. You're not probably, the artist. Yeah. You probably knew some people. You don't. You're not an artist. You're a businessman. Yeah. Stick with the marketing. Okay, you can do that, but get your get your hands off the the art. Yeah. I don't, and and you can see it easily. And so much stuff nowadays. Oh yeah, yeah. And this is this is just a prime example. Uh, so I hope that, um, not like I said, this is just a for the film world. Like, take a look at this and see that, you know, you can make a movie that's more true to the artist's vision and people will pay to see it. Like, I'm happy they, to see it. I, yeah. I would have definitely paid for this. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a, just it's a sad story. It is sad. But in a way, it's also, like I said, I'm kind of glad it didn't go further. Okay. I think uh, while this works as a cohesive movie, a lot more mm -hmm. um, as a whole universe branching off of this one, I don't know if it would have been okay. great for everybody. You know, especially since Snyder wouldn't have been directing all his movies. That's the thing. Like, with Kevin Foggy being the executive producer for, like, Marvel movies, he can create a continuity without being the person, essentially, like, Marvel's a pretty branded, yeah. like, if you watch their movies, they're branded. Like, the director's vision doesn't really pour much into it. I don't know if you know this, but Edgar Wright was supposed to direct Ant-Man. Really? Yeah, and he dropped out. And it's no wonder why, because Edgar Wright is, like, a auteur, you know? Mm -hmm. Like his, he has a style. Yeah, very much. And it's not Marvel's. No. So I see why he dropped out. And I see why he didn't make a movie with Marvel. Because Marvel, their directors don't really get the chance to shine. They don't really. But Snyder was a director who's very stylized. And again, if he's not directing every single DC movie, then there's no continuity. Because everyone's going to be doing something kind of different. So the continuity wouldn't have been there anyway. It would have fall. It was destined to fall apart. It was DC's movie universe was always destined to blow up. It was it was a cool idea on paper, but I guess if you look at it, it was just never gonna execute well. And I'm glad it's it's coming to an end with this. Maybe in the next, well, maybe 10, 20 years, we'll get another try at it, stab at it. So yeah, I look forward to that because I'm gonna look more into DC because I'm enjoying some of what I'm seeing. Never really looked into it. Yeah, play play Injustice too. Although that version, that's kind of not good because it's like, <laughs> uh, well, their their version of the characters mm -hmm. is supposed to be like, like I was saying, like the Elseworlds, like yeah. Superman's evil, right? Like Batman, like they're all different versions of those characters. So it's not really a good blueprint for like what they should be. Man, you remember like Superman when he's evil? Superman just sucks. Okay? Ooh, controversial. Superman is not cool. He's never been cool to me, I don't think. And like I'm watching Justice League, like the show. Like, they put that on HBO Max, too, and, like, thank God, because I love that show. Yeah. And even as an adult, like, I still think it's fucking awesome. But, like, that version, even that version of Superman, he's always getting hurt. He's supposed to be a fucking god. He, he gets hurt by literally everything. Every single episode, he's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. He's always dying. Always. He's fucking pathetic. He gets saved by Batman. Yeah, he gets saved by Green Kyle. Lantern or somebody, like, more interesting. You know, Martian Manhunter, Wonder Woman. Literally anyone is more interesting than Superman all the time. And where's Green Lantern? That's, dude, Green Lantern not being Lantern. in Justice League, the movie, is the weirdest decision. I will never understand it. I never understand why they went with Aquaman and not Green Aquaman's Lantern. Aquaman's always been considered so lame. Yeah. I guess they just try to make him cool. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate, I mean, like, in, like, DC continuity, he's become more of, like, the badass mm -hmm. because he, like, in one version, Tall, drowned badass. in Europe or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
But um, I just I will never understand the exclusion of Green Lantern. I feel like that would have been a big plus for him. He's so cool and interesting. I guess like maybe they thought it was too much to introduce because he got to go like, to space and everything because that's where his power set comes from. And what's wrong with space? And I also think because the Green Lantern movie came out like, oh, so yeah. early. That came out like ten years ago though. It was like two thousand eleven. Right, so 2011 oh, and 2017, yeah, 2017, not too big of a gap. Yeah. So I wonder if maybe they were just like, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to go there again, because people are still familiar mm. with that. But it doesn't make sense because Batman came out 2012, right? Like Dark Knight yeah. Rises, yeah. and then they did a new version of Batman. I don't know. He's not, he's not as marketable as Batman, I guess. Yeah, it's but just, yeah, it just makes me want to get into it more a little bit. It, I I can't believe it. I'm very stunned by this because I thought this was gonna be a disaster. I really did like just even a longer disaster, but it's not. It's it's good. It's a decent movie. Good yeah. movie. Yeah, it was. And I'm happy I watched it. I was dreading it, but I'm I'm happy that we yeah. watched it. It's too long, but it's pretty good. Oh yeah, definitely. It's definitely flawed. But you got anything else to say? No, no, no man. Got it all out. All out. Don't forget to like, comment. And subscribe to the channel, Preferred Dimension. I'm Jeremy, and this was... I don't know, what's my name? What Which name do you approve of? You know, Dick. See you in the next dimension.